Very good morning, students. Welcome back to my channel, students. In the previous classes, we are discussed about how to develop an algorithm and how we are design a flowchart for the given problems, right? So today, I will explain two more problems. How to design a flowchart to find the solution of the given problem. So before going to the problem, I we are uh, recall the definitions of algorithm and flowchart. What is an algorithm? Algorithm means it is a step by step procedure to solve a given problem. So we are using a step by step procedure to find out the solution of any problem is called as an algorithm. Next is flowchart. So flowchart means the pictorial or graphical representation of an algorithm. It means so the algorithm is having a step by step procedure. So that step by step procedure we are represented using a symbolic notation is called as a flowchart. In the flowchart, a set of well defined symbols used to design. So those symbols already I will give in the last class that is very important for final. So the vowel symbol we are used to represent start and stop or terminals. So the parallelogram symbol we are used to write input and output statements. The rectangle symbol used to write the processing statements. Next the decision making symbol. The numbers can be used to write the conditions. So hexagon symbol can be used to write the looping statements like this. We are using so many symbols. So here I will give the fourth problem for the flowchart is design a flowchart to find the second largest among three numbers. Already for this problem we are developing an algorithm. Now that algorithm we are converted into flowchart. So you know the flowchart starts with a start and that start we are written using vowel symbol. Next we are read the input values. We require three variables as the input variables. So that input variables I will take them as an alphabet A, B, C. A, B, C are the three input variables. The inputs we are using parallelogram symbol. Next we are find out the largest and second largest of two numbers A, B. We are given a condition. If A is greater than B. So this condition we are written using a number symbol. A is keyword we are used to pause the condition and it is having a question mark. So here two possibilities are there. What are the two possibilities? If A is greater than B, the A value is more than the B value, then largest is A and second largest is B. Otherwise, if A is not greater than B, then B is largest, A is second largest. There are two answers or possibilities are there. So that's why we are represent true and false directions. If it is true, we are write the statements assign A value to largest and B value to second largest. If it is false, we are assign B value to largest and A value to second largest. It means we are find out the largest and second largest of two numbers. But the definition is we are find out the second largest among three numbers. So that's why whichever the largest we get that largest value we are compared with the third number. The third number we are stored by using C variable. So that C we are used to pass the condition is C is greater than largest. If the third number is greater than the largest then so whatever the number here we are received as the largest that can be assigned to the second largest first. So that's why we are written the statement assign largest to second largest. Next we go back C is the largest time. That C value we are stored in the largest variable. First, the largest we are received from A, B that can be assigned to the second largest and here the C value we are assigned to largest. If it is false, so if C value is not greater than the largest, we are compare whether the C value is second largest or not using the condition is C is greater than second largest. If the C is greater than the second largest, if the condition is true, then C is a second largest value. So that's why C value we are assigned to the second largest variable. If this condition is false, 
What is the second largest here we are said? That is only the second largest number. Then we are come out of the if statement. If the condition is false, it will come out of the if and it will print the second largest among three numbers. And after display the output, we are terminate the flowchart using a stop terminal. Are you clear? This is the flowchart of the problem. Now, how this flowchart is works? I will explain with one example. Here, I will take the A value is 5, B value is 8 and C value is 6. So, we take the three different values, 5, 8 and 6. Values can be stored in input variables A, B, C respectively. So, here, we are checking the first condition. If A is greater than B, so what are conditions, sorry, what are the values of A and B? A value is 5, B value is 8. If 5 is greater than H, no, here the condition is false. Once the condition is false, it will not go to true direction. The data is moving in the false direction and execute these two statements. So, what are the statements here we are written? Largest equals to B. It means the B value we are assigned to the largest variable. Next, another statement we are written here. Second largest equals to A. So, which value the second A variable is having? A is having 5. So, that 5 is assigned to the second largest. Now, we get largest is A, 8 and the second largest is 5. Are you clear? The data is not flowing in this direction because here the condition is false. That's why the data is comes in this direction and we will execute these statements. After executing the statement, data is come out of the conditional statements. Next, in this symbol, we are passing another condition, right? The condition will be executed. It will check C is greater than largest. So, which value we are stored in the, we are received in the largest variable H. What is the value of C? 6. 6 is greater than H. No, here also the condition is false. What is the condition false? The data is not go in this direction. It will come in a false direction and it will check another condition. What is another condition? We are check C is greater than second largest. So, here substitute values of C and second largest. Second largest is Second largest value is 5 and C value is 6. If 6 is greater than 5, 6 is greater than 4 H, here the condition is true. When the condition is true, it will not go in this direction and it will come in the true direction and execute the statement second largest equals to C. Second largest equals to C. Then which value is stored in the C? 6. We get the new value 6 in the second largest and the old value will be replaced. 6 is replaced the old value 5. Are you clear? Next, after this statement executed, it will come out of the conditions and it will go to the next symbol. In the next symbol, we are display the output second largest of three numbers. Second largest of three numbers. Second largest. In the second largest variable, which value will be stored? 6. Second largest of three numbers. 6. Okay? So, if you are taking a different values. A value is 15, B value is 8, C value is 16. Then you check whether the flowchart is working or not. You take a different different value. One time give the A value second largest. One time give the B value second largest. You check out the flowchart is correctly working or not. Then only you will clearly understand how we are designing the flowcharts for solving the given problems. Students, I hope you have clear this problem. Next, I will go to the next problem. Take the next problem. Fifth one is design a flowchart. Design a flowchart to generate First, n natural numbers. First, n natural numbers. So, 
explain the algorithms. I will explain the fifth problem, right? For the fifth problem, now we are at the flowchart. Now I will start writing the flowchart. Observe here. Start represent using oval symbol. After that, we are at the input side. The input is first n natural numbers. How many natural numbers we want to print? N numbers means we are given n values five. Let me print up one two three four five. First five natural numbers. Suppose we are given n values ten. It will print first ten natural numbers one to ten. Like that, whatever the number we are given for the variable n, that numbers will be printed. So this is the input variable in our flowchart. We are reading the input variable using parallelogram symbol. Input n. Next, after reading the input, so you know we are initialize the first natural number to the variable. Uh, so the natural numbers all starts with one, begins with one. So that one we are initialized to the variable i. We are initialized the beginning number of the natural number one to the variable i. Later, so this value will be printed. This is the first natural number, right? This value will be printed. So we are right. One output statement output natural numbers natural numbers or we are given the text in the double quotes return the string value in the double quotes this is the output statement now the first natural number we have printed we are write the statement. Output i. We are write the output statement. Output i. After display the variable i of i. Next, we are increment i value by one unit because we are display the next natural number, right? So that's why we are increase i variable value by one unit. So after increase the value of the variable, next. We are not go to the infinite loop. Suppose uh, if we are not passing any condition, it will go to infinite loop. It will never ends up. Keep some of the values are increasing, it will print the number. We are terminate the loop, right? So let's say here we pass the condition is i is less than or equal to n. If i is less than or equal to 1, sorry, less than or equal to n. If the condition is true, the control is go back to the statement i display i or output i. When this condition is true, the data is flow back to this symbol. If the condition is false, if the condition is false, it will terminate the loop and it will end the flow chart. See here, this is very simple. But how this flowchart will be working? We are ex discussed with one example. So, the flowchart execution starts with the first symbol start. After the data is moving to the second symbol. In the second symbol, we are in n value. Here, I will give the value of n is 5. n value we are reading as 5. This 5 value, it will pass to the step 3. In the step 3, we are initialized one value to high. This is the initialization statement. Initialization statement we are written using a rectangle symbol. So the i value it contains one. Next n and i values are positive. The next symbol in the next symbol just we are written one output statement. That output statement is natural numbers or natural numbers or. After display this statement, the data is flow to the next symbol. In the next symbol, display i. So we output i. So which value i contains one? One value is displayed. Next, the data is moved to the next symbol. In the next symbol, what is the statement we are written? We are increased i value by one unit. It will execute the statement i equals to i plus one. The previous value of i is 1. Now 1 plus 1 becomes 2. 2 will be stored in the high variable. 
the old value 1 will be deleted because the 2 is replace the value of 1. Next, after the exit is symbol value, the data is go to this symbol. Here it will say hi is less than equal to n. So what is the value of hi? I value is 2. What is the value of here? 5. Sorry, n 5. If 2 is less than or equal to 5, condition true. When the condition true, the data flow in this direction and again it will execute the symbol statement output i. Which value will be displayed now? I value. What is the value of i? 2. 2 will be displayed. Next, data is flowed to the next symbol. In the next symbol, again i value is increased its value by 1 unit. Previously i contains 2. Now i becomes 3. 3 is replace the old value 2. Next, execute the statement is i less than or equal to n. So, substitute values of i and n. i is 3, n is 5. 3 is less than or equal to 5. Condition is true. Again, the data is transferred to this symbol. Output i, which is the value of i 3, 3 will be printed. Next, it will go to the next symbol. i is increased its value by 1 unit. i value is increased. The previous value of i is 3. Now, 3 plus 1 becomes 4. i contains new value 4. The 4 is replaced with the 3 value. Next, the incremented value of i is positive to the condition i less than or equal to n. 4 is less than or equal to 5. Condition again true. When the condition is true, the data flow in this direction and again this symbol value will be exhibited. So, what is the statement? Output i. i value is 4 is displayed on the screen. Next, the statement i equals to i plus 1 will be exhibited. The old value of i is 4, now plus 1. 4 plus 1 becomes 5. The value of 5 is replaced with the value of 4. Now i contains new value 5. That new value is positive the next symbol. It will check the condition i is less than or equal to 5. So if i is less than or equal to 5, here two conditions are the observed here. 5 is less than 5 or 5 is equal to 5. 5 is not less than, but it equal to 5, right? Here the condition is true. Suppose we are pausing only less than, the condition is false. Here we are pause the condition less than or equal that 5 is equal to 5, condition is true. Again, the condition is true, the data flow to the symbol, state, symbol output i. Which value? i contains 5, 5 will be displayed. Next, i value is increased its value by 1 unit. Old value of i is 5. Now 5 plus 1 becomes 6. The value 6 is replaced the whole value 5. Incremented value of i is positive to the next symbol. In the next symbol it will check the condition i less than or equal to n. Substitute values of i and n. i value is 6 and value is 5. 6 is less than 5? No. 6 is equal to 5? No. The condition is true. Sorry. The condition becomes false. When the condition is false, the data is not going in this direction. Data comes in false direction. It will stop our program. Once the program will be stopped, our required output we are generated. This is our output. So the output will be generated. We are repeatedly execute certain statements until the condition is satisfied. So, this is called as a looping statements. Are you clear? So, this is the way to construct a flow chart to generate first n matched numbers. Students, so, it is Tarta Avinya. So, what are all the uh, stages or what are all the steps we are used to solve the given problem? We are using a seven stages, right? The seven stages we are equal ones. The first one is a problem definition. Second one, problem analysis. Third one, problem design using designing tools such as algorithms and flowchart. Next one is coding. The fifth stage is testing and debugging. Sixth stage is documentation. And the last stage is maintenance. So, we are discussed three stages. Problem definition is over. Problem analysis is over. And now, we have completed the third stage. Third stage means design the problem using designing tools, algorithms and flowchart. 
Next, we go for the fourth step or fourth stage of problem solving. That fourth stage is coding. So, coding, next testing and debugging, what are all the different types of errors are there at the time of testing our program. So, which type of outputs are correct, which type of outputs are wrong. So, next, how we are creating the documentation, what are the types of documentation, then what is the meaning of uh, maintenance or announcement. So, these concepts we are uh, discussed in the next class. Clear? I will send the notes uh, for this class and the previous class. You must copy and write in your CS notes. You maintain the CS notes properly. It is very easy and uh, it is very needed to understand the flowcharts and algorithms. So, these concepts are linked with the next concepts. That's why you maintain the notes properly. Thank you students.